Let's talk about some of the signs um, that maybe we should pay attention to for us all as we're moving and advancing in our careers. Um, seven of many, these are, this is not an all-inclusive list by any means, but seven signs that really kind of stand out to me that one is ready to lead and take on a higher role with higher responsibilities is certainly the fact that they're doing it already. Think about this. We know that leaders and leadership positions are not always the same, that those who are in leadership positions or positions of authority are not necessarily always leading. Having said that, there's plenty of people that I've met in my career who have been leading areas, departments, sections, in some cases even divisions, um, verticals within an organization without the formal position in a C-suite or a vice president role or an executive title of any kind. So you're already doing it. People are coming, and how do you know you're doing it, right? People are coming to you for guidance. People are coming to you for advice. They are looking for you to advocate for them. You are the one who's often taking initiatives and going on these stretch assignments, if you will, that are making you go beyond your current job description as it's written on a piece of paper, right? Whether it's a literal paper or digital, that's a, that's a conversation for another time. Two, you ask questions and you ask a lot of them. Now you're not being confrontational, you're not being annoying, but you're curious. You're always trying to understand what is the objective, what is the outcome? How do we get to where we are and how do we adjust our performance and our path forward to hopefully do something better or in a more um, seamless way that provides value to those using our services or products? Number three, you bring forward ideas, but you don't just bring forward complaints. You bring forward ideas with solutions. Um, I've worked with a lot of folks uh, in, in my career that would almost always raise their hand in a sense of, of a negative contribution, if you will. Hey, this doesn't work. This is a problem. This is something that we need to fix. Great. Could you su suggest a potential path forward? and you get nothing, right? Bring forward ideas and suggestions. Think them through, reflect on them. And then when you're coming up uh, in a team meeting, bring forward the issue or the challenge or the problem that we're trying to address, and then how do you do it? Provide multiple options for people to consider. That is another aspect that makes those who are leaders uh, versus those who are lagging stand out one from the other. Number four, you protect your colleagues or you protect your team in a sense, which means you speak up on their behalf. And not only, as I said earlier, when they ask you to speak up on, on, on behalf, but you're actually courageous. You're brave. You are, again, always respectful, professional and, and polite, but you don't shy away from some serious conversations. You don't shy away from conflict, if you will, because at some point, if you have two opposing forces, um, one hoping that they, they'll outlast the other for many, many months or in some cases for many years is just a whole ocean of wasted opportunities. It's really not a strategic way of moving forward. At some point, you need to bring these two parties to the table and address the, the question that's in front of everyone. And in this process, in this journey, you respect your team. Sometimes you will stick your neck out ahead of others or for others and you are going to maybe challenge status quo. You are going to be that more courageous individual who's not always focused on playing it safe, who's not content in sitting in a back row and saying, hey, I'll go wherever you take me without any input or any agency over my position. Five, you always approach the desired outcomes with the perspectives of where you want to be, of your desired state. Customers, clients, or whatever name you use in your industry, you start with their perspectives. What, what's our purpose? Why are we here? Why do we exist? We provide X or Y. We, pro, we make this product. Who buys our product? This set of customers. What is it that you need? What is it that they need? How does this product make their lives better? You focus on that. How does it solve their problems and challenges? Then you work backwards into the organization and make adjustments based on that. Six, 
you're generally cool, calm, and collected under pressure. Now, you can be very direct, you can be straightforward, you can be vocal, but you don't panic. You don't let little things rattle you. You don't lack confidence. Now, that doesn't mean that those who are not confident cannot be leaders. That's not what I'm saying. But leaders generally have this ability and have this willingness to take on things that others have not be willing to take on or have tried and failed and then have retreated back to the safety of the way they've always done things. And seven, probably the most important of them all, you are self-motivated. You are driven by purpose. You have higher and larger goals and you know where you want to be in three, five, seven, ten years. And you're working towards them. And you're not allowing lack of understanding or lack of willingness to try something new and to experiment and to innovate today by some of your contemporaries to derail you and take you off that path. So these are seven very broad, very high level signs that I believe indicate those and kind of highlight those, spotlight those who are ready to lead and do something new. Please share your thoughts and comments below. What else did I miss? What else stands out? in your perspectives, in your careers, when it comes to those who have been effective leaders in your lives. Have a wonderful day. I wish you all the best. And as always, if this is the first time you've seen this, any of my vid videos, please consider subscribing and sharing it with your friends and colleagues. Have a wonderful day.